with the entire orchestra there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, in the interest of safety, despite those uh, exits, the door you came in, and there's one on the left here behind me. I've actually happened to get over there with the two exits. Uh, we have a lovely show for you tonight here. Um, starting a few minutes, and it runs for about uh, about an hour, around an hour. And we have some refreshments in the room next door when, uh, when we finish. So enjoy the evening. Thank you.
knows them more. This subject was so well known around the world that it was one of the first things mentioned by Irish tourism boards when describing the beauty of the Owen Mountains and the surrounding countryside. This song was written as in the form of a letter from London to his friend back home on Mount, Mount, Mount the Moorpark. This allows for an easy conversation style in which the singer can comment on the sights and fashions of the city. France makes the best of this very clever technique to get both humour and pathos out of the innocence of the singer's conversations. <laughs> Like a jewel, with joy you were ready to shout. 
often with a general scope of sentimentality on the side. He could also be very funny, take his insightful humour on indecisive, wavering over love. I'm simply surrounded by lovers, since damn it, his fortune in land. They're coming in crowds like the plovers to ask for me hand. There's policemen and teachers and clerks, some sandy, some black as a crow. Man says you get used to the creatures. But, ach, I don't know. The convent is in a commotion to think of me taking a spouse. They wonder I haven't the notion of taking the vows. It's a beautiful life and a quiet, and it keeps you from going below. As a girl, I thought I might try it, but I, I don't know. I've none but myself to look after, and marriage fills me with fears. I think I'd have less of the laughter and more of the tears. I'd not be a slave like my mother, with six of us all in a row. Even one little baby's a bother, but I, I don't know. There's a lad that has taken me fancy. I know he's a right bit of him. Though marriage is terrible clancy, I chance it with him. He's coming tonight. Oh, I tingle from the top of me head to me toe. I'll tell him I'd rather live single. But, ach, I don't know. <laughs> Mary's watching and waiting for her boyfriend to return. But her father thinks her foe will never return. But Phil will tip him a French rover and he can hold the roost in the end.
the most common name for a music hall song written in 1877 by Percy French, and subsequently altered and popularized by a variety of other writers and performers. It tells the story of two valiant heroes, the Kitchener and Dunham al Bullock, fighting for the Turks, and his foe, originally named Ivan Skavinsky Skavar, who encounter one another. They engage in verbal boasting and are drawn into a duel in which they both perish. <laughs> Thoughts of so many young Irish people being forced to emigrate in search of work 
sat in French, and he wrote the song as a kind of a lament for them. <laughs> Do be fine, 
songs, Phil the Fluter's Ball, Slattery's Mountain Foot, and now you're right there, Michael. The tune itself is widely known around the country. They then in recorded their version in their 1987 album Ballroom. What a tongue-twisting roller coaster of a song. Behind the jumble of syllables, however, lies a simple take on the battle of the sexes. <laughs>
The ladies in this poem probably lived in one of the many tenements buildings in Ireland at the time and dreamed that someday they would rise above their situation and become a lady. Alas, it was never to be. If I was a lady, I'd wear a hat. Or on the street, to be looking at. And I'd have a lady's maid, do you mind? To let the mud me dress behind. A dress that was made with pure satin. None of your bits of magazines. <laughs> and all delicties will grind their teeth when they hear a chocolate underneath. If I was a lady, but I know I now, <laughs> this shop is the decentest thing I got. <laughs> if I was a lady, I'd drive to the play. And I'd look to weep opera glass and say, I've seen this silly review before, <coughs> the leading ladies and awful bore. Let's all get up when she starts her song and go and eat cakes in a restaurant. Then a powder puff on me knows I'm dead and drive my home from the taxi cab. <laughs> if I was a lady, but then I'm not. And pass to the galleries all I got. If I were a lady, a regular swell, with a hairy paw and a silk umbrella, tis me that would walk to Shelburne's Hotel and order me dinner some pork and beans, and whatever you have in those soup trees, two sweets and a hunk of cheese, oh, and a bottle of pork that is. I'd call for me bill, and settling it, I'd give the waiter a company fish. If I were a lady, but then I'm not. My dinner comes out of the store about pot. Still, it's a lot of show and sham. I'm better off the way I am. <laughs>
Hi, ladies and gentlemen, try that I'm sure. Aren't they great? <laughs> this show is devised tonight and presented by the Cork Academy of Music Ensemble, uh, Drama Ensemble. This um, group of people behind me work very hard here, rehearsing two nights a week uh, under the stewardship there of Caleb Cooper behind, who is the sole tutor here in the school. <laughs> He is teaching here in the school and teaches drama to our students and has this community based program done as well at night, so he works hard. Put on about 10 years, I don't know, and put a lot of people throw their hands in the, in, in the school here and they do the drama and put on several shows. It's, um, I think it's important for the community to have shows like this, and if anybody is interested in, in joining our drama group, we are most welcome. Tuesday night, so Thursday night, or in the office, and I will let you know. Um, what's happening and what night is starting so on. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. We have some refreshments next door and uh, thank you very much for coming tonight. Good night and thank you.